Good eye, everyone. Let's get to hobby. I love painting knights. So let's get another one ready to heap into the pile. We're going to need to drill some holes into the arms of the knight to set up a wire armature to make sure the appendages stay good and stiff. Don't forget though, you can always rip stuff out and try again if you don't like things. I had grander plans for this arm than I ended up going with. Rip it out, put it back in, just fine. The rest of him is pretty good though. I like what I've gotten up to at this point, and you know, it's okay to go back and just change directions on old projects. I'm sure others have this problem as well of getting a force ready to a point and then getting distracted by a new idea. It happens to me constantly, and I don't think it's a bad thing. The only part that can become bad is if you never make use of any of that work that you did put in. This night's been sitting around for a few months after I got a little army painting fatigue, but we're repurposing him now for some sort of nonsense. Things can be reorganized. I think this guy was originally supposed to be for a coordinate to warrior section dual wielding, but I had a lot of problems with my printer towards the end as part of the screen died, so the weapons didn't get printed. That leaves plenty of bits for this, though. Look on the bright side, as you can. I honestly had no idea how either of these arms would actually end up. To tell the truth, I just made random shapes with whatever I could, mainly my hands, until something spoke to me. So we've got a kind of beak hammer with holes or eyes and a furry arm, maybe like an orangutan? As well as some kind of a tactical fowl on the other. A cockatrice breath, maybe? On to the base. This guy needs a bigger one. I knew that already going in, but I did misjudge how much larger. Thought I might want this 40 millimeter square instead, but nope. The tree I crafted out of the twisty ties that came with the lights I bought for this wouldn't quite fit well on that. I don't want to be too cramped here, so let's head up to a 50 millimeter square. Damn chalky. I'm not really intending to use this guy for any game, so why not make a little display base? As a heads up, I'm going to show failures that may come up as I'm testing out mixing sawdust into plaster of Paris as a sculptor mold like, as I'm very cheap. Plus, if this works, it'll make it so much less intensive than blending papers and all that mess with the pulp. You can just go into Home Depot and ask for sawdust and they'll fill you a garbage bag. At least they did for me. Anyway, the mix looks okay, even if the tiny whisk didn't quite find a real use yet. I'll get it eventually. Not quite long enough to stir coffee, like it's slightly longer cousin. Got devoted to hobby uses. Poor lad. I also on the fly tried mixing some PVA into the mix for a portion. So I'll see what that does, if anything. In addition, I'm using some Bach here. I don't know what kind of tree, just one in my yard. There's a lot of them around here. I'm not too worried. You can use big pieces as larger rocks and formations, and break off smaller pieces for small stones and broken bits of wood, which is accurate. The dust that comes off from this kind of hobbying is itself also a useful basin material, I find. So make sure to just dump your towel or similar back over the top of the base to provide random nonsense, preferably while it's still wet. I have a box full of cute little basing animals, as well as birds. Ugh. A dove flew into my hobby space the other day trying to get out of the cold. I can't blame them, but I was nursing a chicken back to health with a bullying break, so the dove was apprehended and put back outside. Doves have such wretched beaks. My goodness, they just look so wrong and unnatural. I definitely have had them on my mind. Might make some wretched dove night eventually. Not now, though. Anyways, I made a little nest for this crab. Mushrooms are cool, so put them everywhere. And a tiny bird watching this all makes it better. The sawdust paste seems to be working all right. Maybe not as neatly sculptable as I've seen others do with Sculptamold, but it seems to be holding well. Here I may have to glue the bark facades there, and a little pink is still poking out from the foam. Might melt when I spray paint it. No big deal though, free weathering as they say. I mean hell, I super glued it earlier. Maybe that's why he's not quite as solid as I expected from that lengthy pin. Oh well. It's primed and we're on to painting. Staining and maybe base coating will be my first steps. I paint in oils. I'll mention them as I go. 
Fitting using odorless spirits in the clear bowl and neo Meglip in the yellowy jelly bowl. I don't know if I like Meglip yet, but it's not bad either. Still figuring it out. First up will be Asphaltum, which will apply to most of the base as well as a few clothy or leathery areas on the night. Gotta think of a name here soon for them. Plus the helmet and horns, why not? Next, we have the purple armor, which I'm gonna try using Egyptian violet mixed with radiant turquoise on. I just think it'll look nice. It's usually odd to use opaque paints in this phase though. I'm just experimenting. I think it might make the coat more even. After that, I'm experimenting with hooker's green, which really just looks like phthalo emerald, but worse. Doesn't feel great, but the Blick Studio paints in general don't. They are very cheap and good enough though. I mix it around with the other colors at random to see what it turns into. It's made of a green pigment in PR101, which I think is used in dozens of different colors. It's one of those that they can burn or raw and all in between. Very versatile and usually a sign a paint will be useful in some respect. If it's reddish, but in this green? Well, it doesn't even really seem to manage to desaturate it very much. I guess it's just a weaker phthalo emerald in case you're struggling to tame that beast. Finally, we add some Tower of Rosa, which is one of those good PR 101 paints I talked about. It makes good browns. This is mostly for mushrooms, but I end up putting it on the tree as well. As I have every color, which is how I paint trees generally, can't dump enough colors on a tree, they'll figure themselves out. Oils kind of just paint for you if you let them. I end up getting a nice blue-gray out of Egyptian Violent and the Hooker's Green, though. Well, damn. Most of this didn't manage to record. I'm figuring things out. But I went in with a bunch of opaque colors. Brilliant Yellow Pale and Radiant Turquoise, mainly. I also introduced Indian Yellow to the mix. A great color made out of cow piss and mangoes. Beautiful yellow, just as you'd think. Very transparent, but incredibly tinting. You can mix it with a white or off-white for a good opaque yellow. I did mess up the helmet in the corrupted footage. Tried to do checkers on the helm and ended up not liking it. Thankfully with oils, a little bit of spirits, it's gone. And then a little bit of brute force contrast to the rescue with that Indian yellow. Okay, we pick up after I took another break and fixed the issue. Hopefully, I didn't. Making the monkey furred arm white and its mini-eyed foul mace is uh, nice and whitish. I reinforce the brilliant yellow pale highlights on the purple armor with radiant turquoise just to make sure the armor reads cool. I like the contrast of this wild, super vibrant guy out in the wilderness. Argot the cock handed. That's a good name. Oh, what a set of brush strokes on those horns. Sometimes it really just works for you. Brilliant yellow pale shouldn't be so special. It's just off white, but it just auto paints so many things. And I changed the crab color once more. I accidentally wiped the black beady eyes off earlier in the lost footage. Didn't mess that up a second time though. Yeah, Sumi lost some more footage. Getting the hang of it, but the dusting recorded all right, so we'll talk about it. This is just a cheap set of Korean chalk pastels. Mungyo, as I recall. I milled them all and put them in this pill organizer for storage. Got all sorts of weird colors, but we'll just be using brown and a yellow. Uh, just scuff it in there with whatever brush you want. It's easy enough to dust off. More so for you, who's likely not doing this on the slightly wet oils. But I don't mind that, just makes them stick a little better. Gives a lovely matte effect that really makes the shinier, gloss figure pop out of the scene. Though, we scuff his boots to tie him into the scene. Eh, you know, dusts and pigments are similar, and a great deal of fun to use. And finally, we'll do a third coat of black on the rim to cover any dust. The first two coats, gone. Don't worry about them. Behold, I got the cock handed. Thank 
Thanks everyone for watching this nonsense. I had a great deal of fun making it, and we'll be committing art at you again soon, I hope. Ideally, I'll even manage to record the bulk of the paintings next time. Oh well, basing's great fun. If you have any suggestions, especially for recording, let me know. Have a good one!